And Mike Sanford will be the head coach of the Maroon team as they get set to take the field here at TCF Bank Stadium. nice it has to feel for all of these guys to at least look up and see some fans in the stands of course it seats 55,000 they gave out 10,000 tickets in less than 48 hours that was the maximum allotment the fans gobbled them up quickly and they are socially distanced and ready to watch some football here between the gold and maroon now we have a special coin toss I teased this a moment ago but since we have the two basketball coaches and Lindsey Whalen and Ben Johnson as the honorary coaches. Johnson of the gold team, Whalen of the maroon team. Instead of doing a coin toss, they're going to have a three-point shooting competition. This is the brain trust of P.J. Fleck that came up with this idea. So let's watch as these two coaches duke it out. Brandon, I don't believe the, the basketball coaches knew this was coming until just a minute ago. I, I, don't, I think P.J. was keeping this as a, a secret. It was surprising. I'm yeah, and I think, I'm you know, you said there's some other tricks up their sleeve. I think we're going to see a lot of surprises here today. Uh, I'll take uh, Coach Whalen on this one. Who are you taking? Yeah, I'm taking Coach Whalen as well. And she knocks down her second one. I mean, this is a, a former All-American, a WNBA champ. She also won an Olympic gold medal as well. It's hard to bet against her. 2004 Final Ladies Four, pretty impressive. Direct your attention to midfield for a unique coin toss between our two. She's in a zone right now. Go for football and a special challenge prepared in place. This is well done. Yeah, coach, coach, coach Johnson's got problems. I think we're yeah, where PJ Fleck messed up is he put these the basketball goal too close to where they're shooting. I think they needed to back this up a little bit. And whoever makes the most. We'll decide on if their team will kick what a way to the ball. What decide who gets first possession. In a true spirit of competition, as you probably Well, now guess, she's hit a little bit of a cold streak. Now, okay, so she, she hit straight on, but from pass. the wing, a little bit of a struggle. So now we'll see if uh, Ben Johnson, who just got hired March 22nd to replace Richard Patino, can do any better. Now, Coach Johnson should be better because he was quite the high school football player. He was actually recruited in both sports. So he's played football, he's played basketball, and he's playing basketball on a football field. You'd think he'd have the edge, but I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, he's a product of De La Salle High School in the Twin Cities. Now, what do we do if they tie here? I wonder if Coach Fleck has a scenario prepared for that. Oh, that's going to be a problem. Great. Yeah, might have to stretch the team again. Oh, I think he might have yeah. it here with the shots yeah. from the wing. Yeah. Our unofficial count says that Ben Johnson, I believe, won that. So the coin toss will be secured by the <laughs> hey, gold squad. It, Ibrahim was supervising the whole thing, it looked like. <laughs> Well, he looks, he looks like he's ready to be a coach. <laughs> I bet he could do it right away. All right, the goal team has the elected to receive to start the game. Kickoff is coming up next. And after Coach Johnson won, Mo Ibrahim coming right in saying, yeah, yeah, we're, we're going to receive the football. We <laughs> want to start things out on the <laughs> offensive end here. Okay, so we're going to see is Zach Axted with this gold team. Now, think about this. Him and Tanner were in incredible competition going into 2019. Morgan won the competition, and Zach didn't take one snap last year, you know, for a lot of reasons, but obviously the abbreviated season had something to do with it. So these two quarterbacks, uh, Tanner and Zach, were so close in 2019, and Zach never took a snap. So this, you talk about the young guys, this is this is a big day for Zach as well, Brandon, to get out here and have his own team and compete and, and try to beat Tanner Morgan. Yeah, absolutely. No live kickoffs, but they will simulate one here. Dragon Kesich 
will do the kickoff duties here to get us started. I don't know that there's a coach in America that has the special teams live in a spring game, regardless of the format. You know, just no reason. I was to just going to ask you. I've never seen it. Yeah, yeah, there's no reason to put your team at risk in a, spe in a spring game in special teams. And the reason special teams are, are dangerous is the, the amount of space between the players before contact. There's a lot of blind slap, side blocking, even though it's it's against the rules. So uh, we won't see any live kick today. You set it up well, Coach, but here is Zach Anikstead, who back as a freshman in 2018, started the first seven games. He beat out Tanner Morgan that year, but last year didn't play. 2019 was out with a foot injury, but a chance here today to pilot the gold team. And he starts with a quick pitch and catch out across the 30 to Daniel Jackson, who was a true freshman last year. And Jackson is certainly a receiver to keep your eye on. Yeah, no doubt. I watched him quite a bit on last year's tape. I think he's one of the up-and-coming guys. He's got he's got a lot of experience for a young guy. He, he's a guy that that will be more part of the receiving core this year than last year. He's a talented guy. And 12 catches, 167 yards, but they certainly expect those numbers to go way up. And our first run of the game is Trey Potts, one of those guys who's fighting for carries behind Mo Ibrahim as the backup tailback. And he's able to pick up the first down. Again, Brandon, they, they, no one's going to get more benefit out of this game than these running backs. With Ibrahim out, who's going to be the second running back? This, this game will tell a lot about that. And we have our first penalty. It's going to be a false start here on the gold side. The first two plays have been, you know, they're pretty traditional. They mesh with the running back. The first one was an RPO. The second one was just a uh, option read play. So they're they're really in the basic mode right now. And instead, we'll pop it in front. And an early touch there for Lamecki Brockington. Or Wally, that's Wally, that's the Just quarterback. The carrier, who played both teams. sides in high school like most of these guys do, and he gets the touch here on offense, Coach. A little bit of a surprise. Yeah, and, and as you know, the coaches are really excited about Wally. He's got a lot of talent. It, you know, he's got to get more and more reps. And, and again, the value of a game like today, uh, you know, Wally is going to be one of the main benefits of it. Yeah, they said that he's going to be special. He was Mr. Mississippi and a bright future for Wally. Uh, uh, we, we, we knew we would see some curveballs. Uh, these coaches said they have some things up their sleeves. So Wally with the early carry. And then you see Anikstead there as the play is blown dead. Remember, these quarterbacks wearing the gray jerseys, they are no contact jerseys, so they will not be tackled or hit. Which all the defensive coaches will be a little upset about, especially when they're running the option. And that last play was an option really executed well by Zach. So third down at three. They'll try to pick it up on the ground, but not much there. Three coming over to make the tackle, including the linebacker Cody Lindenberg, who had an impact last year as a true freshman and now a sophomore. And Coach Rossi was really uh, positive about Lindenberg's spring so far. You know, he's pl he's played some in the past, uh, but but Joe Rossi thought he's had really a very good spring. Danny Strigo was there on the tackle as well. They're going to go for this near midfield on fourth and one. And I don't think he got there. It looked like Niles Pinckney, the Clemson transfer, the headliner of the eight transfers, is the one to make the play defensively. Yeah, Pinckney actually was a captain for one year when he was at Clemson. Played quite a bit, and then last year didn't play all that much. Here you see him. He's got tremendous pad level. Fronts up the ball carrier. That's really well done. Again, look at her shed the block. Arm under to get released from the block. Really well done. He, I mean, that is a veteran move by Pickney for sure. And by the way, Brandon, going for it on fourth and one at the 50 in a spring game, it's not that big a decision. 
Yeah, right? I mean, there's Come no on. loss here either side, so you're going to be a little bit more aggressive. So now flip it over, and here's Tanner Morgan. Back for another year as the starting quarterback, third in a row, and he throws it over the middle, a little bit behind his intended target, but Chris Artman Bell, the top returning wide receiver, Tanner brings it Morgan in. That was a base play for them more in 19 than last year. You know, when you look at Tanner, his... His percentage completion was 66 in 19, 58 in 20. And that play was one of the plays they ran more in 19, Brandon, than they did in 20. And that's one of the reasons the percentages went down this past season. But he completes it for the first down reception and now on the ground, Cam Wiley. Coach, let's look at those numbers you mentioned from Tanner Morgan, 2019 to 2020. What's your biggest takeaway when you see this? Well, their base play is the is the RPO, meaning the quarterback meshes with the running back, reads a second-level defender whether to give it or whether to throw it, and they weren't as good at that play, and that's where most of his completions percentage was better in 19 than 20. Just the seven touchdowns, five interceptions last year. Underneath, complete, and quickly into the red zone, the tight end Austin Henderson down to the 10-yard line. Morgan's pass complete to number 83, Austin Henderson. Yeah, Henderson's wide open here because it's a run fake, and so the, the seventh man in the box came up to support the run, and Henderson was wide open. Up the middle and a few yards there for Cam Wiley, but coach, to go back to your point for Tanner Morgan, yes, the numbers were down, but you had... The first year of defensive coordinator Mike Sanford. Also, they had just lost Tyler Johnson at wide receiver. So there were a lot of changes last year in addition to all the COVID issues. Yeah, no no doubt. And again, no spring practice, Brandon, in Mike Sanford's new offense, right? So, I mean, that, that was a big factor. Now that they get a full complement of spring ball, and he, Tanner Morgan saying really trying to get used to all these new faces at wide receiver. Ottman Bell, as we said, he's the one that comes back with the most experience. They keep it on the ground with Wiley, and he is stuffed right around the five, maybe the four-yard line. You know, I, I, I can tell you, Brandon, so far we've had the one penalty. This, this is a really clean game right now. I know we're only into the second series of the game, but you can see why creating this atmosphere of competition, the draft splitting up the team, this is one of the byproducts. Both these teams want to win the game. Third and goal, and a trick play, and it ends with Tanner Morgan in the end zone. Well, I guess we can say it now, right? Mike Sanford told us there was going to be a bunch of trick plays, and he said look for them early before or later, and then he swore us to secrecy, so he, he was true to his word. Nobody covers the quarterback with most downs. They, you really don't expect the quarterback to catch the ball. So it's always a good thing if you want a trick play to use the quarterback as a receiver. And Mike Brown Stevens, the red shirt sophomore receiver, the one to throw it to Morgan for the touchdown. And now Brock Walker on to add the extra point. And just like that, the Maroon team, they get the stop defensively and they drive it down. And Tanner Morgan with a touchdown reception for the fifth-year senior. You can see, Brandon, see Tanner Morgan. He came over the sidelines and he grabbed one of the coaches and he, and he was waving his hand. So a byproduct of making this a competitive game is signals, right? So he was obviously saying to the coach, I either missed the signal or what was the signal? And, and so all these type of experiences in a spring game, once you make it a serious competition, which doesn't fit every program, but it fits Minnesota this year, there's a lot of little things that you're going to cover that if you had a scrimmage today instead of a game, it perhaps would not have come up. And you mentioned the trick plays, Coach Mike Sanford. He kind of, the inside baseball he told us is that the unofficial rules is that each coach has to fit in at least two trick plays. Well, Mike Sanford says, I have four up my sleeve. I'm going to use all four. We've already seen one of them. Right. So we're going to see if there's going to be a, a technical foul. we got two basketball coaches coaching the game. So <laughs> he might draw a tech on that one. I'm not sure. <laughs> Another kickoff for Kessich. Well, the one thing, you know, we need to mention is both offenses look 
you know, pretty good. But remember, and, and Joe Rossi, we, we talked about this the other day with the coaches, the defense is going to be pretty vanilla. There's, there's not going to be a lot of different things. In situations where you might pressure, you might not even pressure in that situation on a game like this. There's Joe Rossi there. He was at Rutgers a few years back. He's been in the Big Ten a while. He's a really, really good coach. And those vanilla defenses, Coach, in the spring game, that's pretty universal, is it not? Yes, it is. No no doubt. That That's probably most of the time what, what, what you're going to do. Everybody wants to see offense in the spring game. And uh, other than defensive coaches, everybody likes the system. And Anikstead fooled everybody. He kept it and gets a nice gain on the outside across the 40. Oh. Okay, now what Zach does here is he makes the end of line defender make the tackle, and that's why he sucks so wide open. In the first series, Zach ran the same exact play, and they blew the, the they blew the play dead because they don't want to hit the quarterback. But it was a big gain as well because he's sinking the read all the way into the line of scrimmage with the tailback, and that end of line defender has to come down, and there's no alley player. Really well done by Zach. Twenty yard gain. Bouncing it to the outside, Bryce Williams, the third running back in the game to touch the football. He gets eight as we go down to Coley. You know, guys, speaking of running backs, I've been keeping my eye on Muhammad uh, Ibrahim, and after the end of last series, he came right up to Trey Potts, the end of that fourth down play where Potts was stuffed, and he said something to him. I couldn't tell what he said, but uh, it's just that maturity. It's just showing that he is looking like a coach in this spring game as we see the big pass here. Yeah, nice completion to Co-Keith. Two tight ends out today in Witham and Span Ford. Again, it's just caution. They're going to be ready to go by the fall. So some increased time for a veteran in Co-Keith. Yeah, and Co's one of the six-year guys that will be playing this year. And he uh, He's done a lot of different things. He's played in different games. He's just kind of a spot player. He's always dependable. Did a good job on that play. And Bryce Witham, the other tight end I mentioned. Gosh, he and Micah do Treadway on the defensive side. They are seventh-year players back here at Minnesota this season. Another Trey Potts gets another carry. Yeah, uh, uh, again, every time Potts gets the ball along with these other running backs, it's just it's a critical evaluation for the coaches. Uh, I think most impressive, I think, has been Zach uh, with, with with the goal team. I mean, he has total command of the offense, uh, making the right reads. Uh, I'd like to see him throw the ball here, which I'm guessing he will do, second and eight. Again, a guy who started seven games as a freshman, beating out Tanner Morgan that year. Then he got injured against Nebraska, and injured the following season, and never got back to the top of the chart as he swings this out to Trey Potts for a first down. You know, in modern-day offenses, you have to be able to catch the ball as a running back. Here you see the swing pass, Trey Potts, perfect ball, right? Because Trey didn't have to do anything but put his hands up. So the ball position on his body was perfect by Zach, and the timing, the timing was well done as well. Talk about being too deep at quarterback, Brandon. This is, this is impressive so far. Yeah, what a luxury, and a guy in Anikstead that's been around this long. Nice carry here, Bryce Williams. So all these guys at running back getting to display more because of Ibrahim being out and doing a nice job. Now Bryce plants his left foot about two yards past the line of scrimmage and bursts it up upfield, keeping the shoulders parallel to the line of scrimmage. That was really an impressive run. He must have good vision to be able to see that cut the way he did. Williams, a native of Sarasota, Florida, fourth year with the program, but he still has three years of eligibility remaining. And this time, he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. See Cody Lindenberg, number 45 in Maroon, again coming up with a tackle. Right, really good, really good play. Here's the replay. This is probably a missed read by Zach. Let's see. No, it's not a missed read. What the defense did is they ran a linebacker through, so it was a, it was a, it was kind of a blitz, which usually you don't see in. Uh, spring games, but sometimes what happens in spring games, Brandon, I hate to tell you this, is the rules kind of change depending, especially with the defensive coaches. They don't always do what they necessarily agree to, like don't run a linebacker through. Third and three, going for the end zone. 
And triple coverage there. Coquif had maroon jerseys all around him. So now fourth down, and this may be one of those situations where you go for it, but it looks like they may kick the field goal. Yeah, that wasn't, you know, there wasn't anybody open. Zach did the right thing. He, you just have to throw the ball away. I mean, that's a play where you're in field goal position. It's third and three. Think like the coach if you're the quarterback. If it's not there, don't force it. We'll, get, we'll come away with three points instead of uh, having the ball intercepted. So Brock Walker, who handled most of the place kicking duties last year, on for the chip shot. And he knocks it right through to get the gold on the board. Keep in mind a running clock. This will likely wind us down to the end of the first quarter. And that is the end of the first quarter. And well, the Big Ten Network family works with a heavy heart this weekend following the passing of our longtime technical manager, Brett Smith. Brett had been with the network since its launch back in 07. He was so often the MVP of our production, making sure we could seamlessly bring you the sights and sounds of Big Ten football. He worked long hours, always did so with a big smile, a great attitude and an infectious laugh that will never be forgotten by those who knew him. He will be missed by so many across the industry, especially those of us at Big Ten Network. To Brett's daughter, Marion, his son, Dalton, and the rest of the family, our thoughts are with you. Brett Smith was 63 years old. Getting ready for the second quarter, but first, a look at the 2021 schedule, and boy, Coach DiNardo, it starts off with a bang, does it not, with Ohio State coming to town on September 2nd? Yeah, I, you know, and I love opening the season with a conference game, and we haven't been doing it that long in the Big Ten. Many conferences around the country have been doing it longer, but I think what it does is it generates interest outside the Big Ten footprint because you're likely to turn into the Ohio, tune into the Ohio State Minnesota game if you're not a Big Ten fan just to watch it. So I think it's been a great move by the conference three, four years ago going to conference game openers. Yeah, an early test and they will get the Buckeyes here at TCF Bank Stadium as that pass goes in and out of the hands of Mike Brown Stevens. Yeah, Brown Stevens is an up-and-coming talent. Evidently, he's had a great spring, according to the coaches, and that play is, you know, Tanner Morgan's bread and butter is that play. He meshes with the tailback, and he reads the second-level defender, and that's why he was so good in 19. And we mentioned it, but Mike Sanford said, I specifically drafted Brown Stevens on this Maroon team to get more reps with Tanner Morgan as those guys try to get in sync. Finding a little bit of running room, Cam Wiley takes it out across the 30, and he's running behind a very experienced offensive line coach. This will be one of the most experienced offensive lines in the entire country this year. Yeah, they're crazy deep, Brandon. They're very well coached. I mean, there's a lot of clips I watch. That it could be training film at a clinic uh, and a lot of experience. One of the reasons you can have a game like this and split your roster is because you're deep in the offensive line. 161 combined starts in the offensive line and one of the guys out there right now number 64 Connor Olson in his sixth season as Morgan airs this out and holding it in Chris Ottman Bell that's a good catch you know th this is an interesting thing this is a great play by Ottman Bell but a generation ago, Brandon, you know what this would have been called? A bad pass. Now you know what it's called? Back shoulder. I, I, I mean, the game has changed because of the spread offense and because of passes like this. And that was really well executed. Great catch. Big, biggest play of the game so far. 34 yards there on the connection. Morgan to Ockman Bell. Now off the play fake. Pressure coming, but able to unload it and take it into the red zone. Oh, and then a fumble. Brown Stevens lost it. And we'll see how they rule this, whether they call it a catch or incomplete. No signal. Brandon, I want, I want to show you Preston Jellin makes this play by blocking, okay? He didn't block it clean, but he hit him enough where Tanner could move his feet to the left and stay in the pocket. Really well done by Preston Jellin, the number 25, the running back. The 
they're going to say it stays with Maroon. It was a fumble after the catch by Mike Brown Stevens, and then the ball was out of bounds as the gold team tried to recover it. So a break for the Maroon squad and Tanner Morgan. Again, we're seeing pretty basic defenses. Morgan, 4 of 5, 79 yards as he hands it off here. And a short run for Preston Jellin. This, this offense... That, go on, I'm sorry. That <laughs> offensive line is what I was going to go back to, Coach, with those 161 combined starts. You know, the projected starters are all seniors on the offensive line. You know, and again, I, I mean, they're really an efficient group, and they're a deep group, and uh, they'll be a strength to this uh, this team without a doubt. A lot of guys have played a lot of snaps. P.J. Flex, first year, he inherited just four healthy offensive linemen, but it's a different story this year, and, and Coley Connor Olsen is really one of the guys to be watching. He sure is. You know, when he was coming back for a sixth season, Brandon, he made one request to P.J. Fleck, and that was... Give me two weeks off so I can study for the MCATs. Well, he studied for the MCATs. It paid off. He ended up scoring in the 96th percentile. That means he's pretty smart. Uh, the O-line coach here, Brian Callahan, he's making his pitch to Olsen to stay right here at University of Minnesota, where the med school is number five in the country in, in, uh, in primary care. That's uh, according to the U.S. News World Report. So we'll see what he decides when it's time to go to medical school. But 96 percentile, yeah, that's not too shabby. And P.J. Fleck, as his pass is deflected and brings up fourth down. P.J. Fleck says the only problem is now I have to call, call I have to call Connor Dr. Olson. I can't call him Connor anymore. You know that last play was snapped with two seconds on the on the play clock, and, and again, little experiences like this. Now Tanner is a is a veteran quarterback, so he's been through that in the game. But just something like getting the ball snapped, knowing the clock's ticking, getting the ball snapped right at two seconds is really impressive by Tanner. He, he certainly is a, a veteran guy to handle situations like that. But with a pass knocked down, it leads to a 36-yard attempt, and that is pulled by Dragon Kasich. No good. So the Maroon squad misses an opportunity to go back up by seven. Uh, he hooked that pretty bad. So in the kicking game, they've got a Kent State transfer, Matthew Trickett, who's all Mac last year, and he's going to be here in the fall, and he figures to compete mightily for the starting kicking position. That's an area where P.J. Fleck experienced a little bit of trouble last year. Yeah, no doubt. You know, you talk about the transfer portal and those type of things. You know, this is what coaches are using it for. If you have a need and somebody's in the portal and it's a good fit for them, you know, that's where we're going to see the guys making some changes. And instead off the play fake, and that pass knocked down over the middle. I believe that was Derek LeCaptain that got the hand on it, number 35 in Maroon. Yeah, watch the replay. Now, Zach, it's not open. He really shouldn't have thrown that because once the receiver, see, the receiver was so close to the defenders, and that's why he was banged around a little bit. So even if he had caught the ball, he, he may not have been able to hold on to it. So there was a window there. Zach, once Zach missed the window, he should not have thrown it. And a good play by LeCaptain. Gardner, Wisconsin, the linebacker. Second and ten. And three yards on the ground for number three, Trey Potts. You know, all the running backs uh, uh, are pretty disciplined. Kenny Burns, who played for us at Indiana, coaches the running backs. You can all, you know, you can tell they know when to push off the outside foot and get upfield. And it's not just one of them, but all of them. So, uh, pretty well coached by... Uh, the old IU Hoosier, Kenny Burns. And that was one of the things with Trey Potts. They said they wanted to improve was just that, Coach, putting the foot in the ground mm -hmm. and not worrying about getting outside, finding a hole. He's doing a better job of that. Right. Threaten the flank, plant your outside foot, and get upfield. Pressure coming. Throw out to Daniel Jackson. Second catch for Jackson. And then the ball is free. The Maroon team says they have it. Still no signal, but Maroon comes out of the pile with it. They've got the football. There's our turnover. Yeah. 
Yeah. I, I, I can tell you, though, you, you know, that that's a tough one on Jackson. I mean, that ball's pretty secure. You know, there's contact fumbles, and then there's, you know, you're not placing the ball and pressuring the ball the way you should. That, I, I, I'd say that was a forced fumble, not, not just a fumble by the offensive player. That's too bad, too, because Jackson's had a really good spring. He's got to come back now in, in this game and make another play and make up for it. Great job, a great series for Derek LeCaptain, the linebacker. He had the batted ball, and then he forced that fumble. And that brings Tanner Morgan and the Maroon offense back out on the field. Great field position. It's a good time you go deep sometimes on the change of possession. And they'll do just that. Looking for Arden Bell. He's got it. Touchdown. Absolute. Perfect play call. Perfect situation. Great job by Alton Bell. Yes, that'd be great. Yeah. 28 yard connection from Morgan to Chris Ottman Bell, a pair of fifth year seniors connecting. And you figure to see that a lot in the fall with Ottman Bell being the most experienced receiver coming back. So, situation calls for it. Really, I thought there was a there was going to be a double move. No double move. Ottman Bell just down the field, and Tana Morgan putting it absolutely perfect. Again, used to be a bad pass. Now it's a 50 50 ball back shoulder. <laughs> But you called it, Coach DiNardo, after those turnovers and sudden change. Teams like to go for the home run, and they did just that. Extra point is good by Kessich. Make it 14-3 Maroon. Well, Bo Ibrahim, we mentioned that he is out, but let's go down because he is with Coley Harvey. Yeah, hey Brandon, uh, we're right here with Mo. And Mo, first thing I have to ask you, you're stepping into the coach's role today. I right. saw you talking to Trey Potts after a play earlier in the game. What what is this role like for you? Uh, it's definitely new. Um, you know, when I picked the teams, I knew I was going to be the coach, uh, the running back coach. Uh, I got I got Trey, I got Bryce, and I got KJ. So we're going to make it work. It don't look good right now, but we're going to make it work today. Yeah, now, of course, we mentioned at the start of the show the reason why you're not playing today. You're observing Ramadan. You're fasting. But you've still been practicing. Can you walk me through what your normal day has looked like this morning? Yeah, so uh, so on a workout, on a practice day, I work out in the morning. Uh, I do Indy, and I do some uh, running back drills um, at 5.15 in the morning. So I break my fast at around, like, I start fasting around like 4, 420, 430, work out at 515, uh, go home, take a little nap in, uh, and then come back up and support the team. And then uh, on weightlifting day, same thing, but just weight uh, weightlifts in the morning. Yeah, now speaking of, sp of supporting the team, one of the things that coaches talk to us a lot about is the togetherness, the TGIF that he really wants right. you guys to live up to this year, the, the motto, given everything that you all went through between COVID and of course, being right here in Minneapolis and dealing with the ramifications of, of the George Floyd uh, killing, uh, how do you feel like you guys have grown closer? That you can build off of last year in a positive way. Um, we we just come together. Uh, you know, with COVID and all, uh, we were separated for like six months, seven months. So just being here, being back on this spring, having spring ball together, uh, it brought us closer together um, as a whole team. Uh, and it's definitely something that we missed last year, so it's just nice being back together. We just got one more for you. We were just talking about the offensive line and all this experience that you guys are bringing back there. You rushed for 100 yards every single game last season. What is the sky like? Where's the limit for, for this offense with uh, with you back there in this offensive line? In front of you? Um, well, we're not looking that far into the future. Sure. Uh, right now, we're just working day by day, getting better and better each day. Uh, and that's all we can really do. Um, it's springtime, so uh, right now we're just getting fundamentally better, fundamentally better, uh, getting ready to work, for, work out in the summer. I know you're still licking your chops being behind those guys. Right. Mo, get back on the other sideline. We really appreciate your time. Right, thanks. thanks. Back to you guys. All right, Coley, and during that conversation, a couple of nice connections. Zach Anikstead hit Brady Boyd for the 40-yard pass. Boyd is a true freshman early enrollee, and then the play that just happened there, Clay Geary, six-year wide receiver, had a 14-yard catch to set him up here first and goal. And now they'll try the ground game. Pox switches direction, and he's able to make something out of nothing to take it inside the five. 
know, the other thing that happened, Brandon, when we were talk talking to Muhammad is Bryce Williams had a nice run. I mean, he, he looks a little bit more sudden and maybe a little quicker than some of the other backs. I'd like to see him get the ball more as the day goes on. He looks like a really talented guy. He played in three games a year ago. And, of course, nobody burned a year of eligibility last year. So uh, it's hard to tell what year everybody's in. Yeah, that's the tough part is we've got a, a flag down here inside of two minutes. No, a timeout rather taken by the Maroon side. But that coach is a good point while the timeout is here. You know, P.J. Fleck was sharing with us that right now they've got about 95 players on campus. Normally, you would have less than 85 as you get ready for the 85 allotment in the fall. They're going to have over 100 in the fall and then have to weed that down before the fall of 2022. So it's going to be a very unorthodox season. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Brandon, there's times you have 65 guys at spring practice. Think about it. You lose, you lose a big graduating class. And then the rule in camp is is uh, 85 scholarship players and 20. Now, this year, you're over 85. So I don't know if they're, they're going to have to expand the amount of players you can bring into camp, which is usually, 10, which is usually 105. Look at this trick play. We told you we were going to see some. And Daniel Falele just threw it to tight end Co-Keeft for a gold touchdown. Falele, he's got an arm. Acker. 6'9", listed at over 400 pounds last year. Falele has lost 30 pounds, but as you said, either way, knows how to find Co-Keeft in the end zone. As far as I can tell, he dropped this perfectly. I, mean, I think he has a future quarterback. In spring games. And Co Keeft was all alone. Yeah, in spring games. I don't know that you're going to see that one during the regular season as Walker adds the extra point. <laughs> so we saw the Maroon team with a trick play and Tanner Morgan catching the touchdown pass. And now Joe Rossi says, okay, anything you can do, I can do better. And he dials up the 400-pound offensive lineman throwing it into the end zone. It was well done. Well done. You know, that could have been one of Coach Sanford's trick plays earlier in the week that may have get, gotten hijacked by the gold offense. <laughs> That last scoring drive presented by Marathon. Five plays, 67 yards, capped off by the unexpected Fa Lele touchdown pass to Co Keith to make this a one possession game again. And this is one of those deals where PJ Flett goes off script and all of a sudden we're kicking field goals. So <laughs> Kessich is back out there for a 44 yard attempt. And he knocks it through. See, this is where, you know, P.J. standing out there and he's saying, this is why it's good to be the head coach. You can just change the rules, <laughs> stand behind the kicker, try to get make him nervous, and uh, just do whatever you want. Yuck it up a little bit. So that field goal counted for the Maroon team to make it 17-10, to 10, and now I'm guessing that Brock Walker is <laughs> going to try to even things here for the gold side. As long as it's not a live play, I think you're in good shape. And Walker, it's like he pushed it. No good. Off to the right. And that is how we end the first two quarters. The goal gets the touchdown, but then Maroon gets the bonus field goal to go back up by 7, 17 to 10. Well, pretty clean first first half, Brandon. I, I, again, the defense is, is certainly restricted in what, what they could do. I think the fact that you have two veteran quarterbacks, really. I, I, I mean, even though Zach didn't play last year, I mean, he's a veteran guy. He has, he, he has started in the past. All right, let's go down to Coley Harvey. Okay, we're with Coach Whalen and Lindsey Whalen. Your team is up right now. Uh, how are you feeling right now? Oh, I feel great. Uh, you know, it's a beautiful day. Um, 
some some fans in the stands. See, great to see a lot of smiling faces. Guys are playing hard, so uh, what more can you ask for? Beautiful Minnesota spring day, and having the lead is nice. Now we got to go some halftime adjustments, and we'll we'll be back out ready to go. What's going to be your halftime speech? Halftime speech. Um, you know, it's, it's warm, so we got to make sure we're we're hydrating, um, and then uh, come out and, and and play hard and play hard and. Uh, Make some adjustments, and, and we'll see. But just more than anything, play hard and have fun. Your thoughts when you saw the basketball goals at uh, the 50-yard line for the coin toss? What was going on in your head? And what happened there? You lost it. What happened there? I, 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 that was a uh, surprise to me. I didn't know we were going to be shooting. Um, so it was, uh, yeah, that was the coin toss. So, but, in, you know, strategy-wise, I wanted to start on defense so we get the stop and then go score, which we did. Yeah, last question for you. I want to ask you really quickly about your team. I know you just had a couple of players announce that they're coming back this yep. past week, these, these last couple of weeks. What is that going to do for your program as you continue to build it? Yeah, I mean, having that experience, having players come back after what was uh, an unprecedented year for all of us, uh, uh, it'll be great. It'll be great to have that, that leadership experience. I'm excited about the team and, um, you know, excited that we're going to have you know, some more time to, to practice together and uh, continue to build this program. So I'm very excited. Yeah, well, best of luck to you all this year, and I know you got a halftime speech Thank to give. Thanks very much. Thank you. Almost set for the start of the third quarter, but first, Coley is down there with the gold head coach today, new men's basketball coach, Ben Johnson. All right, thank you, Brandon. Uh, coach Johnson, first of all, welcome to Minnesota. You guys are down. What's the adjustment that this team needs to make here in the second half? No, we're down right now, but I thought we had a good last drive. The big fella put it up in the air. Nice catchable ball. I'm going to take full credit for that. Just so we all, I'm going to take full credit, but I think we got momentum. I'm looking forward to a good second half. Yeah, you guys got the trick plays going. You got the running game going. You have a couple of big passes on the previous series. Uh, it's looking like the team is starting to put it together there. No, it is. I know this is a really good physical defensive unit, too. So I know they were disappointed with a couple uh, series in that first half. So I expect them to bounce back here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, you actually played the game yourself, a top 20 recruit at one point in time here from the state of Minnesota. Uh, what was it like when you found out that you were going to get a chance to coach today? Oh, it was pretty cool. I mean, obviously I follow football closely and to be able to be on the headset and give the speech and be in the locker room and be on that sideline and get a different perspective than just from a fan, uh, it's been awesome. So I appreciate it. Yeah, last question for you really quickly is this is your first year now here in this program. Been assistant coach at a lot of stops, first time as a head coach with the men's basketball program. What are you most excited about as you come back home here? Just excited to get with my guys, you know, get the guys here um, to build it, you know, kind of within my vision. Um, we've got unbelievable support from top down and um, got a great staff. And so just super excited to, to get guys here in the summer and see what we can do. All right. Sounds good, Coach. Thank you very much for your time. Good luck thank the you. Rest of the way. Thank, thank you, you, Brandon. And congrats to Ben Johnson. 40 years of age now coming back home to be the head coach and the third quarter starting with a maroon team having the football and again tanner morgan comes back out there to pilot the squad that's up by seven pretty clean first half like to see him run the ball a little bit more only to see the running backs uh depth here is some of that running back depth cam wiley 14-yard gain. Well, what's interesting about the first half is that we had two touchdown passes by non-quarterbacks. Now the third quarter starts with a nice run. Nice run by Wiley. He, he sees the inside jammed up, and again, he slides out and, and gets upfield as soon as he sees daylight. Well, well done. Again, running backs here have an opportunity to be the second one behind Ibrahim as we start the season. It was such a big gap last year. Ibrahim with 201 carries. Wiley was second on the team with just 29 carries. They're hoping to lessen that gap this year. And, Coach, I would think that, look, Ibrahim obviously could be the bell cow, and they expect him to be, but you probably don't want that big of a discrepancy between your top running back and your second back, do you? No, you don't. You want him to be as good and as competitive as they can be. You know, but in this offense, you have to be deep. You know, P.J. always quotes Glenn Mason, I need a, a pair and a spare. And, 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 and they have an opportunity to, to do that. Uh, they're all a little different style, but they all fit this offense. And 
Here is another give to Wiley. For a short game, by the way, you mentioned Glenn Mason. He sent me a picture. He's watching today from down in Florida on the beach. So I don't feel any kind of sympathy for Coach Glenn Mason. No, there's, there's, there's very little sympathy, I think, throughout the Big Ten network for Glenn Mason. So don't don't, <laughs> don't feel like you're in a minority. Well, I wanted to see the uh, running backs a, a little bit more. I'm sorry to interrupt you, and, and, and we did. So now we got third and seven. Uh, again, critical situation. More so for the new receivers on the team than the quarterback. Now they're going to set up a screen, but in and out of the hands of the experienced veteran, Chris Ottman-Bell. So that will bring up fourth and seven. Now, Brandon, that's about ball placement. It was a, it was a low pass, and then... Chris Altman Bell is is looking downfield a little bit. If that pass is up where you don't have to break stride, then you can catch it and look at your blockers at the same time. So certainly should have been caught, but the ball placement uh, by Tanner Morgan could have could have been much better. First punt of the game for Mark Crawford. Again, no special teams are live, so a fair catch taken. What's up, the Maroon team in their first series, unable to get anything going, and now the Gold team will come out with an opportunity to try to tie this game. Good start for the defense. Coach Ross is probably pretty excited about it. Plus, I believe that's the team he's he's coaching. But uh, much better start to the second half. First half, the defense kind of uh, the offense had their way with the defense. Start of the second half, the defense had their way with the offense. You said it, but Anikstead was impressive in the first half, made a couple of really nice throws, and now he comes back out here for the gold team's first drive of the third quarter, starting from inside his own 10, and quickly getting it out near the 20-yard line. Daniel Jackson, coach, that's one of those receivers again that you've highlighted. Yeah, and it's the same play that Zach hit the first half, and, and there's soft coverage to the single receiver side into the boundary, so it's, a, it's just a matter of quarterback receiving the ball the receiver on a timed route he, he hitches and turns and catches the ball if this was a real game the defense would have to start making the adjustment to that single receiver side into the boundary otherwise the offense would take it all day Daniel Jackson he's the only other receiver besides Ottman Bell that comes back with more than five catches last year it's really a reboot at that position this one underneath Nick Callerup, the tight end from nearby Wyzetta, with his first reception. They're a little banged up at, at tight end, but, but you know, Nick's had some playing experience. He, he's, he's had a good spring by all reports. Uh, that was another play that they ran earlier in the game and hit the tight end a little quicker on that same route. Again, no Bryce with him, no Brevin Spanford, two tight ends that are out today. All precaution, everybody, P.J. Flex says, will be ready for the fall. Anikstead throwing this one away. Receiver. Well, with the receivers, Coach, you know, I mentioned Tyler Johnson, Rashad Bateman gone. P.J. Fleck actually told us this is probably the youngest receiver crew he's ever had in his nine years as a head coach. Yeah, and, and talented as well. I, I mean, they have, they have plenty of guys at receiver and the tight end that, that their pass game uh, you know should be really good in the fall with two veteran quarterbacks with a veteran offensive line I, I, I don't know why they wouldn't have a very good passing attack and of course a good running game as well and the third down throw incomplete wide of Daniel Jackson so the defenses have shined here to start the third quarter yeah, that was the same play, really, two two plays in a row, Brandon. Uh, Rossi wanted to throw the ball deep into the boundary, and both of those routes were disruptive. Disruptive. And so they, they couldn't do it, but their intent was definitely to throw the ball deep on the last two downs. Again, uh, special teams, uh, not, a lot of, not a lot of action. Let's check in again with Coley. Oh, I got stuck in my mask here. <laughs> we'll take it off. So, Carter, uh, we got you right now. Carter, welcome back. How's it feel to actually be back in the building without having to suit up? 
<laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, it's crazy, man. It's, it's surreal, <laughs> but it, it brought back so many memories walking through, you know, just going through the locker room, walking out here. It's it's unreal. Yeah, now you got a chance to catch up with Antoine and, uh, and Kamal before the game. What's it like to see the former players on the other side of things? Yeah, I mean, it. you know, it's fun. It, you know, Kamal and Antoine are my roommates for four years, so we've We've kept in touch, and Antoine said he was flying into town. So we've been, you know, planning out the weekend, went and got Tony's Diner breakfast this morning, all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's just a blast. And I'll tell you what, we're really excited about the future of the Gopher football program. So it's it's awesome. Yeah, I have to ask you about Antoine. You guys had a, had a chance to play against each other earlier this season in the NFL season. Yeah. I say, you sacked Tom Brady. How often do you kind of tell Antoine, hey, look, you guys might have won that game, but I got the best of you. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I made sure I let him know after the game, no doubt. Um, you know, hopefully at some point Tom can sign that jersey for me or something like that, but that'd be pretty cool. But, I mean, then you got Antoine making a big play against us in the end, end, ending minutes of the game, and uh, that's just Antoine Winfield for you. So, But it's, it's really cool, you know, seeing – guys that I played with now in the league making plays doing what they do now you also mentioned your excitement with this year's team what what are you what have you seen so far today that really gives you optimism about 2021 just the energy in the locker room the energy on the field the leadership I mean the guys clearly love playing together and and they're bought into every single part of the Roll the Boat football program. And so I'm telling you, Gopher fans, you should be excited about the future of the Gopher football program because it, it's going to be an exciting season. Yeah, last question. Who are you going for, gold or maroon? Uh, I'm still not sure. I, I got I got Clay Geary, who was my roommate, you know, for four years too. I got my cousin Cole Kramer on the other team. So I'm, I'm somewhere in between right now. Yeah, well, there you go. That's the best way to be. Thanks very yeah, much, Carter. Thank absolutely. Thank you guys, Brandon. All right, and his cousin Cole Kramer has taken over at quarterback here with inside of seven minutes left in the third quarter, and that pass is knocked down. Good job defensively by MJ Anderson to get in there and disrupt. MJ Anderson. Yeah, your running back's got to pick this up. Jellin misses the, the rush off the outside. He's got to scan the field, make sure the protection sound inside out. So that could have been uh, Preston Jellin's guy, who had carried the ball twice uh, during the break. Uh, and we also had our second penalty of the game, Brandon, which, uh, I, uh, unless I miscounted, it's a pretty clean game. Yeah, and both of them have been false starts on the offense. You know, we talked to Carter Over Coughlin, a Minnesota fans obviously familiar with all of these guys. There with P.J. Fleck is Carter Coughlin of the Giants now, Winfield Jr., Super Bowl champion with the Bucs, and Kamal Martin, who's now with the Green Bay Packers, the NFL talent coming back home to watch the spring game. Always a great endorsement when they come back. I mean, it says a lot, it says a lot for the program. It's great for your present roster to see people come back because they had a great experience when they were there. And especially neat when you get a Super Bowl champ in Winfield. And keep in mind, Tyler Johnson also part of the Super Bowl champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers squad. Joe Rossi is determined to throw the ball deep. That was another deep ball to make that he couldn't get it off. The last three plays, he's tried to go deep into the boundary. <laughs> Speaking of NFL talent, we talked about Bateman. Don't forget, yeah. yesterday, Ben St. Juice was taken in the third round by Washington. So a couple of draft picks this year so far for the Golden Gophers. Second and 15. Third penalty of the day. Of the day. Yep, there's the flag. The so they're going to air it out. Did he catch that? He did. What a grab! Daniel Jackson with two defenders draped all over him. There it is. Great concentration. Awareness of his right foot inbounds. Really well done by Jackson. Really well done. 37 yard play. Yeah, he was being held for sure. Victor Pless had his jersey. Well, it was the fourth time in a row they tried to go deep, so I'm glad they had some success. <laughs> and they did it on a free play, so now operating in plus territory and getting another nice game. Brady Boyd, one of the true freshman early enrollees there. And now they've got the boundary corner deepened because of the deep ball. They throw the ball in front of them. It's well done. 
Nice catch by Boyd. It's the second catch of the day, I believe. It is indeed a product of South Lake Carroll. Very, very good high school football program in the state of Texas, and he had 18 touchdowns last season as a senior there. First and 10 inside the 25, this time on the ground. Cox gets the edge. First down. Pushed out shy of the 10. This is about the third time we've seen Trey Potts cut it back. So the, the two, two things are happening here. You're going to see it on the replay. Great push by the offensive line, and he doesn't cut it back until he's almost one yard deep in the line of scrimmage. So he doesn't telegraph to the defense early in the play that he's cutting it back. He wastes the last possible moment. Well done by the offensive line as well. 12-yard gain, two plays ago. That 37-yard pass was our longest play from scrimmage today. Now it'll be second down inside the 10-yard line. Good couple plays for Potts. And again, you know, you deep it, young running back. You know, every every opportunity they, they, they get, you know, you take advantage of it. And you try to separate yourself from the other running backs. You want to be two because there's the, they're going to probably have three or four. You want to be number two. Potts was limited to five games last year. He got injured against Illinois and was banged up. So he was kind of the third guy, to your point, behind Ibrahim and Wiley as a timeout is going to be taken here by the Maroon squad. Yeah, it, it, it's second and seven here, Brandon. They're probably going to throw the ball, but Bryce Williams is in there running back. I'd love to see him get the ball just to, just to see him and, and see how he's competing with the other running backs, but it's probably going to be, probably going to be a pass. Bryce Williams, you mentioned him earlier, Coach, and that you've been impressed with what you've seen on his few carries. That's a guy that many forget. Back in 2018, he got a lot of run. He had over 500 yards, four touchdowns, but then last year in 2020 was limited. He was recovering from COVID, never really saw the field. So he has a lot left in the tank, he says. Hopefully he can put it on display this season. Yeah, he does. You know, he, he's a he's a talented guy, and he, you know, these guys just need the reps. One of the one of the challenges coaching running backs is reps. Only one, you have four or five in the room, but only one plays every down, and it's a problem getting them reps. Well, they do get him a Good. rep here, Good. and he's able to slip forward to the five. Post contact yardage on that one, Brandon. He, I mean, he he was hit soon after he received the ball. Watch him get hit. Watch him spin, and he's he's gonna he's gonna make some yard. That's well done. I mean, that's an ugly three, four yard run. That is a big time run right there. Look where you are in the field. I mean, every yard the field has shrunk. You can't throw it deep. Every yard is difficult to get. That that's a big time play. That doesn't look like much. Six foot, two hundred and ten pounder Bryce Williams. Now he goes to the sideline. Third down, off his back foot. Flags coming in as the pass is short of Jackson. Yeah, off your back foot in the in the deep red zone, not usually a good idea because you have you have no velocity on the ball. The defense of backs are sitting on the receivers because Holding. they're not threatened with defense number thirty nine. Penalties half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. They're not so it ends up depth. working out okay. That's on Nathan That's Seward. Automatic. First down! First and goal to the goal team! And now inside of a minute, chance for the oh. goal team to tie this up. Here's a trick play! Another! Trick play, and this one for a touchdown. It's Sam Schluter taking it in. Now, I'm going to tell you, that was, that's, that's, this is typical of an offensive lineman. He could have got in the end zone without contact, but he found contact. He wanted to run into the guy. Watch, he could have just ran around, but now he leans into the guy. Only an offensive lineman would do that. Look for contact when you don't need it. Just run to the, the corner, six -year Sam. senior. <laughs> the six-year senior left tackle, 6'6", 325 pounds. He takes it in. The extra point is good, and we are all even at 17 apiece as we go toward the end of the third quarter. 
look at Sam. He is fired up. There he goes. As he should be. Yes. So we saw we saw Lele, his teammate, throw for the touchdown pass. And now another lineman, Sam Schluter, takes it in, and all P.J. Fleck can do is smile. Same smile he had on for Falale. <laughs> well, Coley, we knew these trick plays were coming, did we not? Oh, we sure did, Brandon. And I have to say that I was just behind the gold team bench. And Brevin Span Ford, who's not playing today, the tight end, he just was walking up and down the off the uh, the sideline saying, offensive line are playmakers. The offensive line are playmakers. And clearly, we have seen them making some key plays in those trick plays today. <laughs> well, there's certainly an experienced offensive line, and they're putting all their talents on display. We'll have the fourth quarter when we get back. 10,000 was the capacity here due to COVID restrictions, and 10,000 are here, including some of the students. Excited to see some go for football. And, you know, Coach DiNardo, this has been a pretty entertaining affair, all tied at 17 as we go to the fourth quarter. Yeah, there's no doubt. You split the team up, you have a draft, so the week starts out a lot of fun, and then you wind up with a competitive game. I, I, I mean, I'd say this is a huge success so far. Hope nobody gets hurt. Let's just get, let's just get through the fourth quarter healthy, Brandon. Spoken like a true coach, Tanner Morgan rolling out and in and out of the hands of Lamecki Brockington. That's another true freshman early enrollee, the highest rated of the incoming wide receivers, but he dropped that one. Right. Lamecki's got to catch it, secure it, and then turn up the field. Probably, you know, just takes you a little bit of time to learn the, the pace of this game opposed to the high school game. He's a young guy. He'll get it. He's a good talent, good player. Colquitt County High School in the southern part of Georgia. Second and ten off the play fake. Deep ball. Morgan looking for Armin Bell. No flag. They say the coverage clean by the freshman Justin Wally. Speaking of good defenders that are in coverage, Antoine Winfield, Super Bowl champions with Coley Harvey. Yeah, Brandon, and in fact, the first thing I want to do, I got to point out what's on your arm, Antoine. Tell me about this tattoo right here. <laughs> yeah, so right here I got the Super Bowl trophy. Um, afterwards, I knew I wanted to get a tattoo because I knew once I won a Super Bowl, I'm, like, I'm definitely going to get something. So I decided to get it on my arm, and it's pretty cool, and yeah. hopefully I can get some more. Yeah, yeah. How yeah. long did that one take? <laughs> uh, this one took about four hours. Yeah, about well, hours. It, it was about a four-hour game, and it was well worth it, I'm right. sure. Oh, you know? definitely well worth it. <laughs> uh, tell me about the end of that game. You know, you had the, the key play that basically helped to ice it. Uh, you're a rookie. You're in the Super Bowl. You got Tom Brady, Gronkowski on your team. All those guys. What was this whole <laughs> whirlwind of a year like? It was crazy. Um, being surrounded by all those good players in the locker room and everything just uh, really helped my game, just being able to watch them work and everything. And um, as we progressed throughout the season, it was cool just playing with them, man, because great players, goats. I watched them growing up. So being able to play with them was super fun, especially to win the Super Bowl with them. Yeah, absolutely. What is it like being back here today? It's weird. I feel a little old. <laughs> I'm like, man, I think it's crazy because, I mean, I was just here and now I'm alumni now, so it's cool. Yeah, you feel old? I, a little old. It's weird. It's, it's weird. It's been a year, man. I know, right, but I'm still reminiscing all the good times I had up here, so it's yeah. all good. Yeah, absolutely. What are What was a key moment that you felt like from your college days here in Minnesota really prepared you for what you just went through as a rookie in the NFL? Yeah, I would just say um, really Really, my injuries being here and playing football, just learning through my injuries, um, I feel like that just got my men like my mentality um, on point with everything, and I feel like it allowed me to uh, kind of elevate my game to when I got to the league. So being injured in Minnesota and going through those injuries really, I feel like helped my game. When, when guys here who are here right now, when they ask you about the process, the preparation for the NFL, what do you tell them? Um, I mean, it's something that you got to be dedicated to do. Um, it's a process every day. Every day you got to show up to work. Every day you got to practice you got to watch film and um it, it's a process but it, it's worth it yeah for sure uh, last question for you who are you going for today gold or maroon yeah, i'm going with gold I'm going with gold why is that gold all the way i'm gold my, got one of my roommates on it so i got to cheer for them oh absolutely hey antoine really appreciate your time yeah best of luck the rest of the way thank this you year. i appreciate it thank you thank you brandon yeah you mentioned playing with tom brady tom brady entered the nfl in 2000 and Antoine Winfield Jr. was born in late 1998, so it's quite interesting that they would be on the field together to win a Super Bowl just last season. But how about his big takeaway, Brandon? Watch them work, right? Doesn't matter how much talent you have, 
you got to work. And he was around a lot of really talented people. And yet, he, and yet he doesn't mention talent. He mentions work. Watch the work. Interesting. This defense putting in a couple of nice plays with some work here defensively to bring up third down. Saw a sack by Ja Joyner, and then Joyner was in on that last play as well on the tackle of Bryce Williams. So third and 15 here. Yeah, Zach has to get rid of that ball on the sack. He, he held it way too long. Now they're third and 15. Can Anikstead make up for it? Let's it go, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Derek LeCaptain. The linebacker returns it to the 40. Yeah, running to your right, throwing the ball across your body into the middle of the field is never a good idea. And, you know, you, you know, Zach's trying to make something happen now. He's trying to win the game. But here you see him. He's going to scramble to his right. He can't really see all the way to where uh, – who's 35? I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Le Captain. He Le Captain. Can't, he can't. He can't see Le Captain, right? And that's why you don't – one of the reasons you don't throw the ball late over the middle because you, your vision is, is, is cut back. Uh, and the longer the play goes, the least you want to, the less you want to throw it across the middle. So, a mistake by Zach, but he's trying to make something happen. How about the captain? He had a batted ball, he had a forced fumble, and now an interception. This is a guy who last year just played special teams, but there's some spots to be had at linebacker. He's putting his name in the hat. Yeah. You know what, though, Brandon? He played in all seven games, and he was a big part of special teams. And you, you know, that gets you ready for this kind of move. Well, and the linebackers, as you see, Wiley gets stuffed. The linebackers coach last year struggled a little bit, but again, they have the core group back, and they're hoping big time that that is a group that can make a big jump in 2021. Well, you know, I, I think they can. I mean, you, you're looking at James Gordon, number 13, playing a little bit. There you see Burns, but this James Gordon guy, he jumped out at me at some of, on some of last year's tape. He just has to learn the game, and that's what Joe Rossi said. He's, he's got to play a lot because he's got a lot of talent. And that ball batted down by another linebacker, Jaquandis Burns. You mentioned James Gordon. They also have Braylon Oliver, who missed last year with a torn ACL at linebacker, who returns number 14. He's going to see a lot of time and will figure into that rotation as well. They're, they're deep at linebacker. There's a good look at Oliver. Uh, Jaquandis Burns, I mean, he's a young guy who's who's come along. Uh, they struggled there last year. They weren't they, they weren't happy with it last year. I'll be shocked if this linebacker core doesn't completely turn it around this year. I think they're deep and talented. Third down at 10. Tanner Morgan on the run, able to complete it. And that's Mike Brown Stevens stretching it out to the 28 yard line for a first down conversion. Yeah, this is well done by Brown Stevens, well done by Tanner. Brown Stevens is one of the guys that the coaches have talked about having a really good spring. Good job after the, after the catch, he gets upfield right away. Immediately gets upfield, tries to replace his tracks. And that keeps the drive going here. Less than eight minutes to play. The winner gets Goldie's Cup. All tied at 17 between Maroon and Gold. Nowhere to go. Wiley straight down to the ground. And there is Braylon Oliver coming back off the torn ACL and making a nice tackle. Yeah, now you're going to see the ball being turned back inside here by, by number eight. He, he's the one that really makes the play. Uh, Thomas Rush, he forces it back inside to the pursuit. Without him, the inside pursuit really doesn't get to the ball. Really well done by Rush. Speaking of Oliver, though, Coach Flex said he's not back to where he was. As that ball is lost. Morgan, that's a fumble. It slipped right out of his hands, but he's able to jump on it to bring up third down and long. Yeah, just... Hard to tell why that would happen. Just doesn't look like there's any reason. Uh, we have overtime in this game, huh? Yeah, yes, we could. Well, will they bring the goal back out for the two basketball yeah. coaches to shoot on? <laughs> or the field goal kickers, one or the other.
<laughs> How about the basketball coaches kicking field goals? They could do it that way as well. Oh, yeah. Now, there we go. That would be a sight. <laughs> You saw Lindsey Whalen a moment ago coaching the Maroon team. Ben Johnson, the gold team, over the middle, somehow fitting it in there. Beautiful pass and a nice catch by Arkin Bell. Yeah, this is this is going to be a seam route, and we're we're going to we're going to see it here now. They've got the field divided. Arkin Bell is going to take the middle right there. Perfect. Really well done. I, I mean, the, uh, the, uh, Tanner could have waited a bit longer. But it was really well done. Just over the fingertips of Braylon Oliver. You know, Otman Bell catches it outside, he catches it short, he catches it deep, he catches over the middle. I mean, he's a complete receiver. Now, last year, he led the team with 19 and a half yards per catch. Here's Preston Jellin. Morgan was out there trying to throw a block as Jellin gets a nice gain and takes it inside the 10. Yeah, good cutback, good acceleration. You're right, Tana tried to make a block, but he's out, <laughs> he's out front, though. That was one of those Matador blocks. He yeah. just got out of the way. <laughs> Jellin again, first down gain, so they'll have it with four opportunities to score from just outside of the five. This is perfect for the spring game. They're going to score here, and then they're going to give the goal team like a two-minute drill to tie it up, go for two, and win it. It's got all the excitement you're looking for, Brandon. And it will still be a running clock the rest of the way. The goal team, however, does still have all three timeouts for when they get it back. Jellin down to the four as he is draped to the ground by Ben McNabo. Defensive lineman. You know, and we haven't talked about the defensive line. They're a deep group as well, Brandon. Right? And, 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 you know, the hardest position in college football to be deep and quality at is defensive line. Uh, but with everyone getting an extra year of eligibility, most people will have deeper lines this year than they than they usually have in a, in a typical year. And Minnesota's going to be deep in the D-line. Morgan. Completing it, and down inside the two goes Austin Henderson, third down and goal. Yeah, really well done by the defense collapsing on that ball. I mean, that was, they were three or four yards deep in the end zone, and that ball was court cut, just accelerating. It's well done. Put, and to put a bow on your point about the defensive line, P.J. Flex says this is the deepest that we've yeah. ever been at both tackle and in. We got six guys at defensive tackle, he said, with great experience, including the two transfers, Pinckney and Val Martin. Third and goal. It's Wiley. Wiley. Touchdown. Yeah, what, what Wiley does here is his angle to the corner of the end zone is really excellent. He, he knows they know he's got the ball. And it's going to be a foot race. Really well done. Well done by the offensive line. It's a big play. And that caps an 11-play, 40-yard drive in just under seven minutes. Extra point up and good. And this, as you said, Coach, this is what you want in a spring game. You got 24-17, to 17, one team leading it, and now the other side. Three timeouts and just over three minutes to play to try to even things. Yeah, and, and this is where, you know, the head coach can change the rules at any time. I mean, if he sees an opportunity to have a legitimate two-minute drill by the goal team, Instead of just letting the clock run, he may do that. It's a situation that can win you a game. You don't practice it every day. It's never during a scrimmage, and that's what he may be thinking about right now. So if this is an opportunity, uh, you know, especially with Zach, you know, he's the second quarterback. To put him in a two-minute drill situation would be a great way to end this game for him and, and really for the team. It would be, be a cool thing to do. Let's see what P.J. decides to do. 
Well, we are told that he is going to stop the clock, but he brings in Sam Pickerin instead of Zach Anikstad. Huh. Pickerin, the fifth-year player who is yet to see the field in this spring game, but also in regular season action during his four years as a Golden Gopher. And he hands it off to Bryce Williams. Well, coming up next, don't forget, football excitement continues. Live coverage of the Nebraska spring game presented by Marathon on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app right after us. So Pickering got a play in, and now Anikstead returns here. This makes sense, you know, get, get Pickering in so he's played the game and then give Zach this experience to try to bring, bring his team to tie or win the game. Staying on the ground, reversing course, Williams. That's a pretty good job of making something out of what looked like nothing. Yeah, it is. Again, he's he, he has a burst. I mean, he, he's, he has a real chance. I mean, I think we're going to come out of this game thinking they're fine at running back. Ibrahim hasn't played all, all day. And, you know, I think your starting running back not playing in the spring game for whatever reason is a really good idea. Third down and one. There's the first down on the carry by Trey Potts. Okay, so 156. Let's see what Zach wants to speed it up. You can see him single to the sideline. Joe Rush is the head coach of that, that side. See what he wants to do. All three timeouts right. for all the goal three, team. All three left. And instead completes it out to the 45 into the hands of the six-year receiver, Clay Geary. Geary originally a walk-on who was put on scholarship in 2019 with a special moment in the Minnesota Twins game by Coach P.J. Fleck. And now Geary get out, and instead going for him again, and Geary's got it again. Well done. It's a, it's a seam route. We saw one earlier in the game. Really well done. The ball hasn't been thrown inside the hashes very much today. And so they're going to be open when they do it. Now they stop the clock here with 109 to go with the spike, and that brings up second and ten. So now your defensive coaches are saying, "Really, we, we can't run a linebacker through? Seriously, we, <laughs> PJ, we we can't bring six guys. We bring seven. We, you you want us to play with our hands tied behind our back? Four man rush in this situation. We wouldn't do it in a game." They brought seven. Wow. Well, here comes some pressure. Gets rid of it. Wow. Got a hand on it. Did Terrell Smith, number four, the cornerback, and almost made an unbelievable interception, but it falls incomplete. So contrary to what I was saying, they, they actually brought seven-man rush there. Now, it could have been an assistant <laughs> coach taking the liberty. That does happen sometimes during these spring games. But Terrell Smith, Coach Rossi told us he's playing the best ball of his career. He's had an up-and-down career. He started as a freshman, then got relegated to the bench, but he is in line for big-time playing this year. To the outside, and a nice stop there defensively. Coming up and making the play, Bishop McDonald. So the gold team coach is going to take a timeout, and they face a fourth down here. So this is for all the marbles. Fourth down, but they, you know, they still have two timeouts. So you know they, they, they've got a lot of time left in this part of the field with with two timeouts. It, it, there's there's plenty they can do. There's plenty of time. What do you think you're drawing up here, fourth and eight? They're going to keep the ball on the outside. Uh, if there's soft coverage into the boundary side, they'll go there on a short route. Just get two yards past the stake and turn around. Every receiver should not stop until after they've gone eight yards. A seven-yard pass does you no good. So the coverage, the coverage on the bottom of the screen here to the white right side of the field is softer. Oh, this might be a free play. 
Now wait, that's not going to count. They blew the play dead before Geary caught it. Yeah, I'm not sure the officials had total control of this play. Let's see what they do. Offside. Defense. Number 90. Five-yard penalty. So then the play Remains so fourth down. No, it should be, it, that should be a touchdown. That should not have stopped the play. That's that's the that's a free play, right? You jump, defense jumps offside. You let you let the play go. So there was a lot of miscommunication, and the whistle came in late. Whistle came in, after but at the any snap. rate, yeah. But at any rate, it's fourth and three, and we're told that PJ Fleck may have been the one to blow that dead. So. You can blame the head coach here. Fourth and three. And wait, we've got whistles again. Timeout. Maroon the timeout. Defense, the Maroon yeah. side. Yep, they want to talk things over here. It's a basketball timeout. They want to see the formation. You call timeout. <laughs> How much, Coach, does 4th and 8 versus now 4th and 3 change things for what the offense is going to try to do? Um, you know, they're probably... I mean, you would never consider running it on 4th and 8. On 4th and 3, you might consider it an element of surprise. Honestly, I don't think, Brandon, it changes all that much. I, I think you're, you're most likely going to throw the ball either way. Um, but, but the defense has to defend the run on fourth and three, not in fourth and eight. Maybe that's the biggest difference. And extend. And now a timeout taken by the gold team. If you don't think that the spring game means anything to these guys, you're wrong. Again, they drafted these teams. There's a lot of bragging rights on the line, not only between the coaches, but certainly between these players as well. They want to win this thing. Yeah, I'd say this is probably pretty competitive right about now. They're, uh, you know, the coaches are going to be in the same locker room after the game. So there's going to be, <laughs> there's going to be some hooting and hollering by one side. That's Coach Sanford. <laughs> Sanford, the coach of the Maroon team, Joe Rossi, the gold team that's trying to tie this thing up here. Fourth down and three. Inside of a minute. And wait, boy, I don't know that we're ever going to get this playoff. Now this might be a false start. Oh, it is, for sure. Uh, I think they're just messing with us now. That was Coke Keith that jumped off sides. I believe. Yeah, number 42, the tight end. So now you're back at fourth and eight. Okay, so back to the original question. How much difference between fourth and eight and fourth and three? <laughs> We're going to find out. <laughs> They're going to throw it in the end zone. Absolutely throw it in the I just zone. hope we finally get this playoff in some <laughs> form or fashion. We've had two timeouts and three stoppages. Now they do throw it, and it is caught. Shy of the goal line to keep the ball game going. Bringing it in yet again, it's Clay Geary. What a second half he's having. Wow. What a great catch. And a great throw, and now a sneak. Or no, it was Potts, rather, and he has stopped the defense. Stopping him here inside of 30 seconds, and a timeout taken at 28 remaining. What a throw and catch, though, Coach, to keep the hopes for the gold team alive. Yeah, no doubt. Right, perfect, over the middle. Here he gets it. Gets his arms underneath the ball so it doesn't. So he's not trapping it. It was really well done. I mean, that, that is a difficult catch. Difficult catch. Especially with Abner Dubar was right there with him in coverage, the safety. Yeah, and, and Brandon keeping that ball from hitting the ground so we're not going through the review, to the bounce up and all that. That that was, I think, the most critical part of that catch is his arm placement. 
And then they tried to run it on first and goal. Lost two yards. So now, second down and goal. No timeouts left. And extend. Throws incomplete. And now third and goal with 25 seconds to go. So they got two shots at this. PJ's checking his clock. He just wants to make sure he'll stay on his schedule. <laughs> no timeouts left. See what formation they're in. Might give us a clue what they're going to do. It's going to... I think they go wide side with because they have single coverage down here, but I think they're going to do combination up at the top. And extend. Throws for the end zone again. Incomplete fourth down. He was trying to get it once more to Geary. Ball was a little bit behind Geary. Could have been a little better thrown inside. Let's see what formation again. They're going to get single coverage on the bottom. But the split, they don't cut the split on, well, it's, yeah, the split's cut a little bit. That ball's coming down here. The same formation as last time, but it looks like the split of the wide receiver on the bottom is shorter. Yeah, that's it. And that pass is intercepted. <laughs> Terrell Smith picks it off to seal the victory for the Maroon squad. Terrell Smith. Rossi said he, he was up and down in the fall and he's had a great spring. I'd say this is a good way to finish him. A guy that started as a freshman that got relegated, as I mentioned earlier, to a reserve role the last couple of years. The plays like this, that'll get him back on the field. Yeah, there's no doubt. There's no doubt. That was well done. That was. They went to Daniel Jackson, which, you know, makes sense. Uh, we could tell Jackson had cut his split down that they were probably going to go to the single receiver side the play before they went to the three receiver side So they knew they were going to get the same look and they thought they had they had thought they had a matchup And I think it is a good matchup You know you've got Terrell Smith and you got Jackson And now the kneel down by Tanner Morgan, and the celebration is on for the Maroon team as they hold on and to win it 24 to 17. And they get to claim Goldie's Cup. There it is. What an entertaining spring game for the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Doesn't get any better than that. And the Maroon with a 24-17 victory.